Well, I think there's a lot of discussion around the real value of these sugar substitutes, these artificial sweeteners. A lot of people take them in the pursuit of good health, uh, trying to lose weight or something like that. Diabetics certainly can get a benefit from these, these uh, artificial sweeteners, but there have been some concerns as well. There was a study last year that said there could be an increased association with heart disease and stroke as a result of this. So, you know, it, this is really complicated. What is interesting is that they tried to figure out with erythritol specifically. Erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol, it's something that naturally occurs in fruits, but the majority of our consumption, at least in the United States, is through artificial means. Uh, they're fermenting corn, for example. It tastes like sugar. It looks like sugar. So it's really good to, to cook with, for example, and it is generally recognized as safe by the FDA. But you then have these concerns about the associations with heart disease and stroke. So what, in this study, the, the one that's making the headlines, a, a very small study, it was just 20 people. 10 people got 30 grams of erythritol, 10 people just got sugar. And what they were looking for specifically, trying to answer why heart disease and stroke, what they were looking for is, does this seem to increase the likelihood of clotting? And what they found was that it did, uh, about twice as likely to develop clots if you were taking the erythritol versus sugar. People who were taking the sugar really got no clots, and people who were taking the erythritol, there was this increase. Again, I want to point out that there is no, there's no uh, reason to believe that your blood sugar levels, for example, would go up with the artificial sweeteners, which is why it's so potentially valuable for those who have diabetes. But it is a concern, obviously, when it comes to other things, clotting, heart disease, and stroke. I do want to point out what the industry has to say about this. Uh, they, they rightly point out that this is a small study and that the, the, the results should be interpreted with caution. As a result, the limited number of participants, a total of 10, were given excessive amounts of erythritol, nearly quadruple the uh, maximum amount approved in any single beverage in the United States. That is true, 30 grams. But to give you a little bit of context there, a diet soda might have seven grams of erythritol. So if you're drinking three or four of these in a day, uh, you could start to approach that 30 gram amount, which seems to be problematic. Look, again, for people who have diabetes who are watching their blood sugar, sugar substitutes, these artificial sweeteners, they can have tremendous value. But I think one of the messages here that we're hearing is that you've got to be careful in terms of how much you consume. I think people generally know you shouldn't eat too much sugar. Uh, nine teaspoons, they say, for men every day, six teaspoons for women. But I think you have to start applying the same sort of thinking to things like erythritol, the sugar substitute. If you're getting too much of that, that could also be problematic. Just because you're having diet drinks or foods doesn't mean uh, you can suddenly eat as much of those things as you want. I think that's one of the real prevailing messages here. And it's also worth pointing out, if you're doing this for weight loss alone, eating foods with artificial sweeteners long term, the data has become pretty clear that long term weight loss doesn't really happen with those foods as well. So something to keep in mind, but those are the headlines at least when it comes to erythritol.